First of all, I'm going to take my control box key that I get with the robot and open up the control box. Now inside, on the left-hand side, you can see a row of connectors that give us access to our I.O. Now this ranges from yellow-coloured safety signals that are Category 3 Performance Level D rated through all the way to our analogue inputs and outputs on this green connector on the right side. Now, here we have 16 digital inputs and 16 digital outputs in the control box. Half of those, the ones that you can see have a yellow color on the connector, are actually configurable. They can either be category three safety signals or standard digital I.O. that you can use in your program. So these yellow connectors that we see in the control box here can be used to interface external safety equipment with the robot controller. So we can take input from a safety scanner or a light curtain to switch the robot from normal to reduce mode, as we discussed previously. We can use the standard digital I.O. channels to connect to a whole range of different devices, from an input signal from an infrared sensor to let the robot know that there is a new product ready to be picked, to output signals to drive solenoids, valves, any actuator that can run on 24 volts DC. So on top of the I.O. channels that we have in the control box, there is also another convenient connector on the robot tool flange that gives us access to a couple of additional channels. So if I spin the robot around and take the cap off of the connector, inside we can see there are eight pins. So this gives us uh, power and ground, two digital inputs, two digital outputs, and two analog inputs. I can use this to connect to a number of different devices at the tool. Some grippers come already customized for universal robots, so can plug directly into this connector. This on the UR3 especially gives me the ability to take advantage of the infinite rotation on the final joint. So there are no cables to get tangled, it can just keep spinning with the tool flange. Alternatively, I can use the tool I.O. cable that comes with the robot to connect other devices to this interface. Finally, if we take the control box and turn it onto its back, we can see the RJ45 Ethernet connection on the bottom. So the Universal Robot System supports three industrial communication protocols by standard over Ethernet. These are Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP, and Profinet. So I can use these protocols to talk to a range of devices. It could be an I.O. expansion device like this to increase the number of I.O. channels in my system. It could be getting data from a PLC any number of things. We also have some bespoke interfaces for the Universal Robot System. I can send commands directly um, from a PC or other server to move the robot. We have a dashboard server that allows me to load and play programs conveniently, remotely. We also support standard TCP IP socket communications, so I can use that to talk to a whole range of different devices and conveniently integrate my Universal Robot System into the Industry 4.0 production environment.